Okay. So what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about Chad Gadja. And, you know, you, you, most people think Chad Gadja is the silly part of the Seder. I, I will tell you that if they're speaking with people, there are people that don't even say Chad Gadja. And I'm not talking about because they have a different minhag or they have a different nusach. They don't say Chad Gadja because it's some silly little song at the end. They, they don't see any significance in it. In the Haggadah called the Marble Saper, so he says that the source of the Chad Gadja is a, is a scroll that was found in the Beis Medrash of Rebbe Lezer Miguel Maizo, from Rebbe Lezer of Worms, who has another name. He's called the Rokeach, talking about an early Rishon. That means that this poem called Chad Gadja, which we end the Seder with, and if we end the Seder with it, it's got to be something important, was, was something that was in existence probably from around the, you know, the, the uh, mid-1100s. So it's not a particularly old custom, but you know, it's but nevertheless, it is it is a, definitely it is definitely something in the time of the Rishonim. The Chida says that um that it was that that it's brought down that there were people that were making fun of the recitation of this poem. The Chagadja, as we're gonna see, is like a it's like a house that Jack built kind of poem. And there were people that were making fun of it, and um and, and of, of other people that were saying the piyut. And the, the Chida said that this person should be put in Cherem and that, that terrible things are going to happen to him because the truth is, is that this piyut called Chad Gadja is something that has an incredible amount of Kedusha, an incredible amount of holiness, and an incredible amount of power. What I want to do today is that I want to, I want to uncover what is the power of this end of the Seder and why does the Seder end this way with this story of Chad Gadja, of this little goat that daddy bought that seems to get attacked by everything around? So what's the, what's the purpose of this? It's interesting that it's written in Aramaic. Chad Gadja, Chad Gadja, the Zabin Abba Bishrei Zuzei, Chad Gadja, Chad Gadja. That's, that's Aramaic. And one of the reasons that's brought down that it's written in Aramaic is because this way, it was the language of Gullus, it was the language of exile, and people would be able to understand it. Some cipher holds that the reason it was written in Aramaic is because it's actually a lament. It's a kina that's written, it's, it's like, like the kinas that we say on Tisha B'av, and it's about the hurban of the destruction of the carbon Pesach. And therefore, we're makonin, we, we lament in a language that speaks that the language of Gullus. And that's why we do this lamentation in, we, we do this in Aramaic. There are other people, though, that hold that it's about the suffering of the Jewish people. And it's said at the end of the Seder and able to be able to spark conversation, which helps us fulfill the mitzvah of Kol Amarba L'Sapa Yitzipur Yitzias Mitzrayim. The more one tells over the story of Yitzias Mitzrayim, the better it is. And it also gives us encouragement. So no matter how we understand it, though, we need to understand how something that appears so irreverent comes along the cat and eats the and, and eats the goat, comes along the dog and eats the cat, comes along the stick and beats the dog that ate the cat that ate the goat. I mean, it's just it's irreverent. It's it's like it's like a shtick that you have at the end. So how is it possible that something that is that appears to be so irreverent? can actually be so powerful. So let's see if we can understand this a little bit. The gra, and like I said, if you have a Haggadah and you can open up and, and follow me inside, that would be the best, would be first prize. If not, the, the song is simple enough that you can, you can still follow it. We know that when Yitzchak was commanded to give brachos, when Yitzchak decided that he was going to give brachos to Yaakov and to Esav, so Esau went out to go and to make food and to get ready for his dad. Rivka turns to Yaakov and she says to Yaakov, Lechna el atzon, go to the sheep, v'kachli misham, and take from me from there shnei gedia izim. Go take for me two goats. Tovim, good ones, ve'e'asa osam matamim, I will cook them into d- delicacies, for your father, kasher oiv, like he loves. So you, of course, have to ask the question of why Why two? 
What was what was going to happen here? Why did she tell him to go get two Gideon? I can't imagine that Yaakov, that Yitzchak, had two Gideon every single day. I can't I can't believe that that was his lunch. So what did she tell Yaakov to go and to get two Gideon for? Get one Gideon. Get one Gideon. We need two for. So what was about to happen? What was about to happen is that Yaakov, Yitzchak was going to give brachos, which meant that every single toiva, every single goodness, and every single blessing, and every single bracha that we have was going to be given to Esav. And the way that it turned out was actually going to be transferred over to Yaakov. And at that moment, everything that Esav was supposed to get, Yaakov was going to have, which means that everything that we have was something that was transferred over. And had it not been transferred over, then they would have belonged to Esav. So this was the, the monumental moment, the incredible thing that was about to happen was that we were going to pass this over to, to Yaakov. But why did it need two goats? Because, says the Pirkei the Rebbe Lazar, that the reason that they needed two goats was because one was for the carbon Pesach and one was for the Chagiga. It was Pesach time. And we know that how did you eat the carbon Pesach? You first ate a Chagiga, a Yontif sacrifice, you ate a meat meal, and then your dessert was carbon Pesach. It's geschmack. <laughs> Imagine you had a barbecue for dinner, and what was your dessert? More barbecued meat. But that's that's the way we ate it. We ate a chagiga, and then after the chagiga, we ate the we we, we ate the, uh, the the carbon Pesach. So therefore, he was making two of them because of that of that din. Says the medrash that when the Torah says that Rivka said to Yaakov, Kachlucha, take for you, she meant letoivascha, for your good. Like every time it says lecha in the Torah, God says lech lecha, go for you. And, and what does Rashi say? Letoivascha ulahanascha, for your good, and what's going to be best to your advantage. So she says to him, for your good, and that's why she told him to take two. Because toiv lecha, good for you, v'toiv lebanecha, and one that's going to be good for your children. Tov lecha, good for you, because you're going to inherit all the brachos. And tov lebanecha, sheyizku lahavi shnei seirim lechapra leim b'yom kipurim, that your children are going to are going to inherit, bringing two goats on Yom Kippur, one goat that went to Hashem and one goat that was kicked off the mountain, but that this was going to be something that was going to be given to them some great advantage, some great ceremony that was going to be gifted to them and that was going to be bequeathed to them based on what you're doing now, based on the fact that you're bringing these two goats. It was through these two goats that Yaakov acquired all the brachos. And then what did he do with those brachos? He passed those brachos on to Yosef. And that when he set up Yosef as being his spiritual heir, Yosef was the one who now who was the one to form the tribes. So Yosef got all of those blessings from Yaakov. Chad Gadjo, let's just establish this. Chad Gadjo, Chad Gadjo, take one kid, take one kid, de Zabin Abba. Abba referring to Yaakov Avinu. That he bought betray Zuze, that Yaakov Avinu bought. With the two goats that he brought, Chad Gaja, Chad Gaja. Beautiful. Vasashunra. And comes along the cat. And who's the cat? The cat in the Zayar and in our rabbi's writings is represents jealousy. Vasashunra came along the jealousy and consumed all the brothers. Because Yosef was given the spiritual, it was made the spiritual heir. Yosef was given that beautiful coat. You know why Yosef was given that beautiful coat? He was given that coat in order to make him really the, 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 the one, the stand-in for Yaakov. 
And that spirit, that beautiful coat wasn't to say he was better than anybody else, but he was now the central, the pivotal point for the formation of the 12 tribes. But the other brothers couldn't handle that. There was tremendous jealousy. Vasa Shunra came along the cat, came along the jealousy, and it consumed them all. The Achla Lagadio, and it tried to destroy Yosef, who was the spiritual heir to Yaakov. The Shunra, how did it destroy, how did it try to destroy Yaakov? By taking him and throwing him in the pit. By sending him down to Mitzrayim. By losing him. And then what's the next step? The Asa Kalba comes along the dog. Say our rabbis, you know what the dog is? There's a medrash that says that Moshe Hikes Paro ke Kelev. That Moshe Benu hit Paro like a Kelev. Kalba is referring to Paro. The Asa Kalba and comes along the Kelev, comes along the dog, the Noshach Lashunra, and now tries to capitalize on that jealousy and to destroy the boys, to destroy the tribes that had been consumed with this jealousy. The Asachutra, and comes along the stick, Maishra Rabbeinu stick, the stick of tremendous miracles, the Hika Lakalba, and it destroyed the dog, it destroyed Paro with ten makos, with makas bechoros, with Yitzias Mitzrayim, coming to Eretz Yisrael, building the base of Mikdash. It destroyed the Kelev, it destroyed the dog. Vasa Nura, and now comes along the Nura, comes along the fire. The fire is the Yetzirah that burns inside of a person. The Yetzirah of Avodah And what did it do? The Saraf Lechutra. And it burnt up that stick, the stick of Moshe, the stick of miracle, the stick of God. And now Vyosa Maya now comes along the water and puts out Vikovala Nura, puts out that fire. What put out the fire of the Yetzirah for Avodah Zarah? The rabbis. Tyra, the Sanhedrin. The Medrash says that what, what did the Sanhedrin do? The Gemara says, what did the Sanhedrin do? They pleaded to God that he should get rid of the Anshe Knesset pleaded to God that he should get rid of the Yetzirah for Avodah Zarah. So the awesome Maya, the water came, the water of Torah, the Kavalanura, and it put out the Yetzirah of Avodah Zarah. The Asa Torah, the Asa, the, and, and the ox came. And who is the ox? The ox is Edom, is Rome, Vishasa Lamaya, and it drank up the water. It drank up, it destroyed the schusim that they had to beat out the Avodah Zarah and sent us back into exile. And then the Shaykhet came along, Meshach ben Yosef, and destroyed Edom. But then Vyasa Malachamavis comes along the Malachamavis, Vishachat the Shaykhet, the Malachamavis, the, the, the nations of the world, and they came and they killed Mashiach ben Yosef. And then Vyasa Kodesh Baruch Hu, God comes, the Shach of the Malachim of us, and destroys the Malachim of us. And by destroying the Malachim of us, that's when the Geul of the redemption comes to the Jewish people. It's unbelievable. The way, that, and this is, this is based on the Gra. And what the Gra is saying is, is that you have to understand the way the Seder goes. The way, you, know, you have to understand the way history goes. It all started with Yaakov Avinu. That's when the, the three, the triangle was completed. And with Yaakov Avinu, then came the tribes, came Yosef and the brothers. And in the end, it's going to be amazing. In the end, the Malach the the the, 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 the um, HaKadosh Baruch is going to come and destroy the Malach And in the end, there's going to be a Gula Shlema. But what's the story? How did all of this happen? What do you have to what do you have to know? Asa Shunra. As soon as that cat came, as soon as that jealousy came and seized us, as soon as that jealousy got in the way, 
that sinas chinam, that hatred, got in the way of the brothers, it was at that moment that that's when things started to collapse. And we went back and forth in our history. We were then destroyed by the, by the dog, and then the dog was destroyed. And then we were destroyed by the fire, and the fire was destroyed. We were destroyed by the ox, and then the ox was destroyed. And then we were destroyed by the Malach HaMavis, and then a Kodesh Baruch who saved us. And that's the way we end the Seder. We end the Seder with the realization that it's all about the Shunra. It's all about the jealousy. But let's take it a little bit further. Let's take it a little more global. Chad Gajo is referring to the Jewish people. Chad Gajah, Chad Gajah, the Zab and Abba, that our Tata in the Himmel, that our Father in Heaven, that God acquired, He, he bought us, betray Zuzi. With two Zuzis. What's two Zuzis? With the two tablets of the Ten Commandments, with the Torah. But even more specific, with the trade Zuzi, with the Nasa the Nishma with we will do and we will listen. You know, in the future, we learn that a Kodesh Baruch Hu is going to tell Yitzchak, Banecha Chatuli, that God is going to turn to Yitzchak Avinu and he's going to say to him that your, your children have sinned against me. Yitzchak is going to respond to God and he's going to say to him, Rebani Shalom, Benevolo Banecha, it's my children that have sinned against you, not your children that have sinned. In the moment when they said Nasa before they said Nishma, you called them Bni Bechori, my children, my firstborn. Now you're tossing this on me? They're not your kids? And Rashi explains that because you, God, foresaw that they were destined to proclaim before you at Sinai, Nasa v'nishma, you accepted, and they accepted your burden lovingly like sons, then you treated them like sons. B'ni b'chori. And that's why it says, the Zobin Abba, not the Zobin HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but that Abba, our Tata, our Father bought it. Because once we said Nasa v'nishma, we became his children. And that's the way we begin this final stage of the Haggadah. After everything that we've been through in the Haggadah, everything we've spoken about, all the redemption and all the blessing and all the gifts of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we're reminded that we're his children. Chad Gadja, Chad Gadja. And then when we said those words of Nasev and Ishmo, not only did we become his children, but we became Ki Ishachad Belevechad. We became like one entity. But now let's look at this carefully. Vasa Shunra, the cat came, and it ate the gajo. And then what happened next? Vasa Kalba, and it ate the Shunra that ate the gajo. And then the stick came that hit the dog that ate the cat. That ate the shun, that ate, the, that ate the, the, the goat. And a fire came, burnt the stick, that hit the dog, that ate the cat, that ate the, the goat. So it's every one of them seems to be fighting. You know, very often, I'm sure you've heard the explanation that says that each one of these is representing another enemy of the Jewish people. But if this is another enemy of our Jew of, of the Jewish people, then we have one of them is is eating us, and then the next one is eating that one. The next one is eating that one. The next one is hitting that one. The next one is burning that one. That doesn't make any sense. You would have imagined that each one of our enemies was going after the gadio, was going after the the goat, but they weren't. They were going after each other. Why would our enemies beat each other? Stay with me here. It's unbelievable. Let's look at another another passage. That we say in the Haggadah. 
It is this that has stood by our forefathers and us. That not one has stood against us. In every generation, they stand against us in order to be able to destroy us. And God saves us. You ever stop to think what you're saying there? We sing it all the time. What are we saying? That not only one, but in every generation we got them? Yay, Jews! Wow, aren't we lucky? We get them in every generation. What does that mean? That not only one, but that in every generation they come against us? So I'll tell you an amazing, amazing thing. Gemara in Psachim says, Omer Rabbi Ushya, my dechsiv, what does it mean when it says in the Pasuk, itenu tztakas Hashem, tztakas pirzono bi Yisrael, which means, let them chant Hashem's gracious acts, the gracious deliverance of Israel. This was in Devorah's song of victory that she sang after she destroyed Barak. So the Gemara says, "Stalka asa kodesh baruch hu b'yisrael shepazron lebeinu umos." That God did an, a great, a, gave a great advantage to the Jewish people. A stalka, a righteousness. He gave them a big advantage that He spread them out and dispersed them amongst the nations, because the nations are busy hating the Jews that they have, in, that they have in their countries, that they have in their in in their world, and therefore they have no chance they, 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 and, they, and they're busy being jealous of each other and hating each other I've got more Jews I can destroy more Jews I can do worse things and therefore they have no ability really to be able to join together and because they're so busy hating each other they don't even have a chance to hate us the Gemara says Pizur Lurishoyim is a hanala hen vanala oilam. That the fact that we have been separated amongst all the nations of the world, it makes them so busy that they don't have time to go after us and they don't have time to join together to destroy us. That's what we mean when we say, that we aren't dispersed amongst one nation but rather we're dispersed amongst all the nations. And this just keeps repeating itself. We've been dispersed amongst so many, and in this way, because as long as they don't have achdus, we're safe. And that's the message of Chad Gaja. There are eight different forces of evil in the world that are spoken about in Chad Gaja. And as long as they attack and devour each other, we stay safe. And we are a Chad Gaja. We're this singular nation that was bought betray Zuze by Matan Torah when we were at our highest moment of achdus, Chassam Seifer says an amazing thing. The Chassam Seifer says that when Avram's shepherds were fighting with Lot's shepherds, so the Torah says, V'lo nasa osam ha'aretz, that the land wasn't big enough to, to, to hold on to both of them. Ki ha'yu rav, because Avram had a lot of sheep and Lot had a lot of sheep, they couldn't live together. And there was a fight between the shepherds of Lot and Avram. And the Canaanite and the Prezite were living in the land. Says the Chassam Seifer, when unity exists in the realm of Kedusha, it causes division amongst the Rishayim. I'll read you the words of the Chassam Seifer. He says, 
when we are in Achtus Gomer, the Ozkinus the Tzadikim Anolehem Anolo Oilam, getting the Tzadikim together is good for them and good for the world. The Ze Atzmo Pizur Lurishayim, and that is and that is Pizur, that itself causes the separation of the Rishayim, causes them to be diverse and separated. Because we're together, they break apart. The Hahipuch Pepech, and it works the other way. When we aren't together, everybody else in the world gets together. That's the worst thing that could happen. And that's what it means when it says that the land wasn't big enough to keep them both together. And therefore, since two brothers, Lot and Avram, couldn't stay together, that's why the Knani and the Prizi lived together and they lived in peace and in unity. This is what Esther said. When she turned to Mordechai and she said to Mordechai, Lech knos kola Yehudim, go gather together all the Jews. Because when she heard Haman say to Achashveros, Yeshno am echad, there is a nation that is mefozar u meforod bein ha'amim. That there is a nation that is separated, talking about the Jews that can't stand each other and can't get along with each other. And she saw Haman and Achashveros drawing close to each other. She realized that it was due to the lack of unity amongst the Jews. That's why the nations of the world were drawing together. And by eliminating the discord between us, and by saying, Lech knos kol Yehudim, go gather all the Jews, by definition, it would take, it would, it would take them over. By definition, if we would draw together, so then they would separate. And therefore their power and their ability to destroy the Jewish people would be taken from them. Because when we're together, they aren't. And when we're not together, they are. That's why the Python, the one who wrote this little poem, described the Chad Gadja. He could have called us any kind of animal. But he called us a Chad Gadja. He called us that little goat, that little sheep, that little lamb. That was Chad, that was one, it was connected, it was united. And when we're united, then all these eight regimes the Shunra, the Kalba, the Chutra, the Nura, the Maya, the Torah, the Shochet, the Malach HaMavis. Every single one of them is going to eat each other. They're going to destroy each other. Because if we stay Achad Gajah, then they have no chance. And that's when Vyasa Kodesh Baruch Hu, that a Kodesh Baruch Hu will come and he will destroy all of them because they're going to be separated and weak and not united with each other. And that's the message that we have to be given at the end of the Seder. After we've talked about Golis, we talk about how we were in exile, we talk about Geul, about redemption, we end off being reminded that as long as there is unity in the Jewish people, then we have nothing to worry about. But ach in vei, woe is to us the minute that we start to break apart. Because the minute we become an amifozar umiforod beina amin, as soon as we start to fight with each other, that's the moment that they start to unify and to draw together. And where does all of this infighting begin? As the Gra said, the Asa Shunra. 
when the jealousy comes in. When the jealousy comes into the Jewish people, when we can no longer respect each other, when we can no longer see each other as people, when we see each other as movements, when we see each other as representatives, when we see each other as representing something, as opposed to just a yid, as opposed to just a human being. And it doesn't matter what color, what flavor, what shape. You're just a human being. When va'asa shunra, when that jealousy comes into Klai Yisrael, when that sinas chinam comes into Klai Yisrael, that's when destruction begins. And that's the message that we need to hear at the end of the Seder. We need to get that message loud and clear through our heads that we need to understand that when we're unified, we are invincible. When we're unified, so then the Shunra can't get us. When we're unified, then the Shunra is going to be eaten by the Kalba, which is going to be beaten by the Chutra, which is going to be burnt by the Nura, which is going to be drowned by the Maya, which is going to be licked up by the Torah, which is going to be which is going to be slaughtered by the by, by the Shochet, which is going to be destroyed by the Malach Hamavas. And in the end, the Kodesh Baruch Hu is going to save us and bring us a Gula Shlema. This is no Gainas, guys. This is nothing genius, no incredible pshat. It's just what's sitting right in front of me. And with our own eyes, if I gave this shear last week or the week before, I would have said that we're holding in that place. We're holding in the Chad Gaja Chad Gaja. The Zab and Abba betray Zuzay. We're holding in the place that we're B'ni B'chari, that God is looking us like his children, that he sees us getting along with each other. And you don't have to worry. But after last night, after last week, you can't say that anymore. It's not where we're holding and we cannot afford not to be in that place. So the Shaila is, what are six little guys sitting in the five towns or wherever you're, wherever you're sitting? What are, what are five guys? What what? This is a global message, man. We got to scream this to millions of people, to millions of Jews. Tell them, stop fighting. Everything starts with one person. I can't worry about changing the world. But I can worry about changing, changing me. And I can worry about Vasa Shunra. I can worry about my own jealousies, my own angers, my own hatred, my own selfishness, my own inability to be able to see and to worry about other people. That I can fix. To make myself a Chad Gajah, that I can be part of other people's lives and I can be attached at least to those people that are around me and I can strengthen my relationships, that I can do. I can't be responsible for everybody else. I could preach the message. I could I could shout this from the from the rooftops. But I can't really fix it. But I can't fix me. And that's the message that I need to hear. The end of the story, the end of the Seder, the Chad Gaja, it's really the beginning. Because it's telling me, take all of this that you just learned and now go apply it to your life and go apply it to your relationships. Go apply it in wherever you can in Klal Yisrael. 
And then you could bring about the end. It's not the end yet. Yasa Kodesh Baruch Hu. That Kodesh Baruch Hu is going to come and protect and save and wipe out all of our enemies. It's only going to come when I strengthen myself. And when we draw together. And that's the way we have to end the Seder. With a commitment to Geula. And the commitment to Geula is by becoming a finer friend, a finer person, a finer member of Klal Yisrael. Because only then can we hope to see L'shona haba b'yushalayim habanuya. Right? It's just a thought. It's, uh, you know, again, like we started, it's a silly little song, but it's not a silly little song. The message is so strong and powerful and so important for us. And unfortunately, this year, so poignant. So poignant. All right, anybody have any questions or just want to say hi? I'm talking to a lot of names here. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, no. The initial push, the initial push of all the things that was from the Gras. Yeah, the first one was from the Gras. Okay, and then also I just want to say hi. I, by the way, that, this blew me away. I really, I really didn't think much of Chagadja before this. I was in that first category that you were speaking about. And right. now, I'm giving over by the Seder, I can tell you that. It's amazing. You know, I feel like if you don't say Chagadja, to me, to me, Chagadja is very important. We actually play game during Chagadja. You know, when I say a game, we have a we have a thing that each of we we each take a different um, a different sound. So the Chagadja, you know, we say you know, Chagadja, Chagadja, Viyasa Shunira Miao, Viyachol Legadi Yabe, the Dzabe Nava Bichus. We say my sound is the Asamaya. I get these two massive cups of water. I one one of water, one empty, and I pour the water from one into the other, making as much noise of water as I possibly can. And my kids always go crazy because I take these massive cups that you know it takes like like a minute, and I pour it slowly. It takes a minute for it to go through, but but it it makes it alive, and and it allows you to then talk about it. It's not just some some little, and that's the reason why it got it got cut out of the seder because it's just a little song that's all okay, a song. You know what? I'm not in the mood of singing. It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm drunk and I'm tired and I'm going to sleep. No, that's like, it's like shutting off the movie, you know, five minutes before the end. No, don't do that. Don't do that. This is the best part because this is the part that says, take this and move forward. Kobe, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, you know. I was oh, dominating, awesome. so I came. I came a little bit late, but yeah. Oh, Good amazing! Well. Amazing, Baruch Hashem. Nice to be back in America. Oh uh, yeah, it's amazing. You know, yeah. get to see my family. Yeah. See the fam, yeah, for sure. Good. For sure, amazing. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing Baruch Hashem, really great. And you? I'm good. I'm good. No That's issues it. over here. I'm. Uh, I'm missing Eric Israel. I'm missing you. Missing yeshiva every day. Um, it's funny we we grew up like we didn't we didn't like do anything after Afi Komen. That's the way that's the way we grew up. Right, that's right. You eat the Afi Komen, you bench. Good night. I don't, know about, I don't even know if we benched. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we just we just look that like that's the way we grew up. But look, Pesach Seder was very real and it was it was there. But the way we grew up is like. My uncle was always a very religious one. He would like finish it on his own, and like we would all be sitting on the couch relaxing. Obviously, when all my like me and all my brothers we came back from our year in Israel, we started doing the end, and I realized there was a song called Chagadia, and I right. didn't, really, didn't even realize it. When I at least I have some flavor to it. Oh, Hashem. So I'll give you guys homework because homework. if Chagadia means something, then Echad Mi Odeya has got to mean something. I uh, know. What the what the heck is that doing there? Echad mi odeya. Who knows one? I know one. One is the God in the heavens. I know what. Like, what is that? that that's the, the, what we know. Is, the fact that these are the ends, the end of the seder, means that there's got to be something powerful there. So I'm giving you a little homework. Look around. All the commentaries talk about it. All all the English haggadahs talk about what that what that thing is doing there. That's maybe that's next year's share. 